you know, I kind of want to do it. And the pig's probably more suited to that because I can keep repairing it between stages and at night, you know, but, uh, I don't know. It's one of those things where if I got like four grand plus another two in expenses, 6,000 bucks. Yep. Like, think about how many roll cages I can build for kids with that cash. Well, I was about to ask you what what's really next for for Bill, and it sounds like, in all honesty, this is that's the direction you're going. Is is this race car Santa Claus thing? Sounds like it's going to run beyond Christmas, right? Oh, dude, it's going to run all next year. Yeah. I'm not, not going to do this nonstop. Like, I'll uh, cage car in San Diego and probably head north, right? And I'll cage some cars around California and Nevada or Arizona in the wintertime kind of thing. And after I do like a few cars, I'll just find a local storage unit and park it there and then come back to it like a, a month later, pick it up and, and go to the next location. So, so are, there, really, are there long term yeah. plans for, for Bill Caswell? Um, I mean, I don't know. Build a bunch of race cars. Yeah, there are. The um, like, I'm really into the education thing. Right. And getting more. I found out it's hard to explain. But like in the beginning, I guess I inspired a lot of people to stop doing bad jobs and go pursue what they love. And right. I inspired a lot of people to start reading and learning. And oddly, it takes like five or 10 years to actually get yourself to the point where you know what you're doing and into a race car. So I've been in the last year, I've been hearing from like, I don't know, a person or two a week where I changed their life and they're sending me pictures of the race car and what they're doing. And it's like, wow, I, I need to get back to where I'm getting people off the sofa and getting them away from the video games, getting them out in the garage with a welder and their friends, like building things. Um, and so there's also, I know I'm all over the place. There's a college in New York called Alfred state and they've got a four year motorsports program. So it's not like you learn mechanical engineering. You're doing race car stuff all four years. Wow. And I, yeah, and I'm on their advisory board and I'm trying to help them get internships. So if you're out there and you got a pro race team, like I'll fund their travel if you guys won't, but I'm trying to get it set up where each one of these kids can go show up on a race weekend. And even if they're just move cleaning wheels and scraping tires or doing refueling or whatever it is. Uh, if you've got a pro team or a team they can learn from, uh, reach out to me. Cause that's, that's what I'm working on is a uh, internship program for Alfred state. So then there's that, then there's this race car Santa Claus thing. And because of something's happened with the learning in the last 10 years, the loss of books and the rise of forums and the internet and all that, I'm working on this thing that I call race camp. And it's like a three day program on, how to go grassroots racing, like everything but the driving. So like you'd be surprised when guys get their race license, go buy a 911 and don't know how to strap it down to the trailer. Yeah, right. Right. So I'm going to teach everyone from like how to strap to a trailer to, you know, how to weld, your, you know, to cage design so that if you buy a car, you know what you're looking at to uh, how to plumb your fuel system, to suspension settings, to alignment, like basically everything I've learned in the last 20 years in a three-day crash course. So that that's what I'm focused on. And then Race Car Santa Claus is kind of the marketing for race camp. And uh, so, yeah. I, I think know, it's a great a idea, man. I cars. think it's a really yeah. cool idea. Start like a cult of Caswell. Like if I can build like 100, <laughs> give 100 guys their first, you know, free ride, it's going to get pretty cool. And if they then show others how to do it and, help their neighbors and their friends build cars, you know, it's going to be kind of fun. I think, um, making people then smile I'm, through motorsports. Yeah. And then the ways I'm going to start making cash, I'm working on this event that I'm loosely calling DeLorean dash right now. And it's like a three day parody of car culture in the late seventies and eighties. The DeLorean dash. So it's, that's what I'm calling it right now. Dude, My dad like, had one. Make... My dad had a DeLorean for like four or five years. I used to ride around with, it. I used to go to football they're, practice in it. <laughs> they're so cool. It I mean, there's, there's, they're, they're, you know, they're slow, weird cars and, you know, the body doesn't rust, the frames do. And, but, but this is more about like, you know, John DeLorean and his like uh, $17 million uh, cocaine bust in that right. airport uh, hotel outside LAX where he was entrapped by like the feds. And he had a ton of debt and he was short and he, he couldn't keep the car company going. And who knows if he was really entrapped or what happened, but, but that all went down. Right. Yeah. And, car culture in the eighties with Chrysler and all that, it's like all kind of pretty interesting. And, um, so I'm going to do like a three day, like scavenger hunt car thing based on culture, of the eighties with like bad trivia and automotive. It won't cost very much, but, uh, basically you go around and as you answer the right questions and find the right things, you get these like DeLorean bucks. And, uh, and then you got to carry this briefcase and it gets filled with your cash. There's all these games along the way. It's going to be hysterical, but it's basically a way for me and like a hundred of my friends to go on like a three day car trip, uh, without breaking any laws. And then we finish early, we drink beers in the bar and all that sort of stuff. 
So, <laughs> yeah. So those are the things I'm working on. Race car, Santa Claus, race camp, and then these, like, you know, experience-type car events for people that aren't going to put a helmet on but want to go do car stuff with their friends. Well, listen, man. Does that make sense? It, it all makes sense. <laughs> I, I just and, and, like, that was and, a lot of stuff in the last three minutes. But so, so here, here's a couple of things. I'm a 47 year old married person with a son who's six years old, and I, I, I love every Congrats, ounce of my dude. life. That's dude. awesome. Um, I've gotten to do some amazing things in my life. I've been to Africa for Dakar. Like I said, I've won the ball no. five times. Yeah, I've, 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 I'm really fortunate to have gotten to be able to do a lot of different things in life. And uh, I'm a surfer, and I've traveled the world surfing. That's um, awesome, dude. So I, I can fully. Uh, respect and um, appreciate the sacrifices that you've made in some ways to live out your dreams. I mean, and, and you may say, Hey, I'm not sacrificing. And I, I wouldn't necessarily argue with you there. I also recognize that, that like at least right now, my, my life and the trajectory that my life is on is, is much different than yours, but I can, I can live vicariously through the way you're living, man. And, and, um, well- I'm glad, you know, I'm glad. And when you say sacrificing, I'm not sacrificing anything, but certain parts of life are really hard, right? Like yeah. relationships. Yep. Because I'm never in the same spot, right? So I'll be here at my mom's for a bit, and then I'll go to San Diego for the winter. Uh, and by the way, if anyone's got a house they want to get rid of in Campo Lopez, hit me up because I really, really need a house down there, and I can't seem to get one. So, but, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> I'm serious, man. So uh, and it's like K55 for anyone who's curious yeah. about this. But, but, uh, but the, uh, you know, relationships are tough. And then, like, you know, you meet, like, an attractive woman, and she's like, so where do you live? And I'm, you live at your mom's house? I'm like, where do you live sometimes. at my mom's house? Yeah, like, sometimes. But, like, where are you living now? I'm like, I got this sweet motel on the beach. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't always stay there. I got this RV, and I take that down to Baja, and I just camp on the beach. And they're like, oh, my God, you're homeless. And I'm like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> and it's bitching. So, that, you know, so that part of life's hard. And then my friends, you know, you know, I find out like I'm back in town. They're all doing stuff without me because I just didn't even know I was like, even in the area. So yeah. like, so that's tough. And I miss out on a lot of uh, the traditional stuff that everyone gets to love, such as like family and kids. And, and that's really hard. Um, and so, yeah, I guess they're sacrifices. But like, I don't know, man, the messages I get from all the people that I've inspired and all the people's lives I've changed, all the people that I've taught to like work with their hands or or have learned to work with their hands and have developed insane skills are now paying them a lot of money or some of them even traveling the world with race teams because they, they read the WRC Mexico story and decided to go after their dreams too. So like, I don't know, I get to live just like you guys get to live vicariously through me. I get to live kind of vicariously through them in a way. Sure. That makes sense. Sure. So, Oh, uh, you asked about the application process for race car Santa Claus for we wrap up. It's going to be on the Build Race party website in a bit. And basically, I'm looking for kids that were like me when I was 25, kids that have read, kids who have volunteered. Like, if I call the local uh, racing organizations and ask who's the, the best instructor there that doesn't have a race car, like, I want to, I'm going to find that they're all going to kind of come to one name after a while. If I call out of the local race shops, they're all going to usually have one kid that sticks around and wants to learn, right. just trying and hustling. And, and that's the guy I'm looking for. And then there's weird trivia, man. Like, you, you know, I'm going to make you read one of two books. You want a roll cage? You've got to read either Donahue's Unfair Advantage or The Limit by Canal. And I'm going to, you know, before I come to build that cage, if you can't answer questions from the book, I'm going to move on to the next kit. It's just tough. Yeah, like, no, good for you. A free roll cage. You know, I want people to learn, and uh, they're going to have to tell me some things about motorsports if they're going to get some free roll cage, you know? Have you read Shopcraft as Soulcraft? Uh, no, nope. I don't What's know. That? Shopcraft Soulcraft. Shopcraft as Soulcraft. I've got it, and I can't remember the author, but it's basically about a guy that um, realizes that that uh, doing things with your hands is is much more fulfilling than. I think he was an attorney, and he opened a, a motorcycle <laughs> repair shop, and yep, finds fulfillment I, I, in that. And it's, yeah, it's, dude, it's, it's true, not man. fiction. It's it's uh, it's nonfiction. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll pull that down. Order it. Order it tonight. So yeah, that that's kind of the whole wrap up, man. Is it? is that in the five years from when I first quit my job, I went from uh, my mom's garage, the $500 car, to uh, the World Rally Championships down in Mexico, to Pikes Peak. I built, the first time I was ever allowed at SEMA, I built my own car on the floor. And then I entered the Baja 1000 with a car of my own design, which is really, really special to me. And then I uh, went and did second at Targa Newfoundland. I went over to Europe. I I won my class, the Nürburgring SPA, qualified for the 24 hours, the Nürburgring, my dream race, like all in five years from starting my mom's garage. 
So I kind of got to like live all my dreams, even if I didn't do them perfectly. And even if I didn't win everything or I could have done it better, I sort of got the adventures and my friends and all those things that I wanted to do. So now it's time for me to like help other people live their adventures. You know? Well, I'll tell you what, Bill, that's a, a, a perfect way to, to kind of close this thing out because it's, it yeah, sounds it's, as if things have, <laughs> yeah, it sounds as if things have, have gone full circle for you. Um, and, yeah. uh, I, I'm hoping I get to see you down here next week. If, if things play out with your mom, I hope things work out with, 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 with her the way you want them yeah, to. Yeah, they will. It's just, it's just logistics and yeah. timing stuff. And me just, I'm, I'm also in the middle of putting a cage in this other car in the garage. And it's like, do I stay here and keep working or do I go down and drink some beers in Baja and fix some race cars? And I, stuff? I, I know the answer to that, at least from my perspective, but I can't answer for you. <laughs> Yeah, go, I think going I think south. In a couple days. Going south is always on on high on the priority list for me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good way of saying. All it. right, and it, and it has been a bit for me. So. Hey, do I I do ask uh, one question uh, consistently, yeah. uh, and and I ask you to think about it and don't just make a knee jerk comment. Best taco in Baja. Don't need the name of the restaurant if you don't know it, but give me a location, a general yeah, idea. Yeah, I know which one it is. I don't even need a knee jerk. I, I know exactly which one it is. Let's it's hear the one. It. Um, it's that one on the right in those set of stop signs for you in the San Catine. Like, um, it's a big stainless steel uh, counter. It's really nice. You got this weird little like wooden chair next to it. I can pull up the exact area, but it's got to be like it might even be in San San Catine down there by the old mill. You know? Yep. Yep. You yeah. Know the area it's, well. It's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the name of it. Now. So here's like here's the, the nicest, thing. I don't care what stand. the name is. The point is, is that nobody ever knows the name of the best taco shop that they've been to because so many of them are good. What I like to get is that people talk about, oh yeah, it's down here in San Quentin. So what it inspires people to do is just go look for a cool taco shop, you know, because you're never going to remember the name. They've always got different names. So anyway, yeah, that's that's probably true. And then by the way, my while we're on that, like to plug um, uh, Eucalypto at at the old mill. I think that's my favorite meal in North America right now. I'll tell you what. I have been going to, to the old mill for, shoot, probably 25 years now. But I used to, I used to guide. I found it on accident, man. I used to guide wide open trips, and that was one of our stop-offs. And that restaurant hasn't always been there. That, that's a fairly no, new restaurant. No, that was where you stored the motorcycles. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that. Uh, Javier, is that his name? I I don't need, so it's changed hands. The, the 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 guy that owned it with his wife when I was there, it, it was um, oh shoot. No, I'm well, the guy who owns the hotel is different than the guy who manages it. And it used to all be it. together, yeah, and it's right. not anymore. But. Yeah, so my understanding is the guy who's managing. I think man, it's not hot. Jim it and Nancy. That was the the couple that owned the hotel. Jim and Nancy. It, correct. And yeah. so this guy's now man. The card was on my desk as I was just messaging him the other day to see if I could camp out and back. Which you pretty much always can if you're eating in the restaurant, you know. There's room. Yep. But um, whatever you call it. So yeah, he's he was managing the restaurant and he talked to the owners into letting him build out um, eucalypto on his own. So he actually like framed in all that stuff himself, and then built the restaurant. And him and his wife cook. I think she's had like a baby like like a year ago probably now. And uh, the food's outstanding, like pasta and the big cheese wheel. Yeah. And- oh my gosh! So that I ate there in February for the first time, and it was—I it, I would agree with you—it's one of the best meals in Baja for sure. Yeah, it's one of my favorite meals in North America, man. Like I, I'd rather eat there than in like Manhattan. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I right on. Be serious. Uh, and I've been stalling because that taco shop. Well, there's Camelou. Yeah, man, it's got to be. Um, it's got to be can can San, yeah. San it's like it's it's right as you get to San Quentin, and it's on the right. And you know, I was hoping to pull the name because no one actually ever knows the names of these places. I tell I'll I'll share mine, and I do it quite often. Mine is okay. Is what you got? Lalo's Tacos, and it's at the top of the La Rumorosa grade as you head down into Laguna Salada from Takati area. And they sell uh, tacos al vapor there, which is a steamed taco with shredded beef on the inside. And it's, it's it's rather unique that this, the steam tacos are more of a mainland thing. You don't find those in Baja very often. And uh, I can I can devour those things in like three packs. One of the you know you, you order them in three packs and, and they just keep coming. You know, so if if you're ever headed that direction and can pull off into La Rumorosa, Lalo's Tacos uh, is, Lalo's is the place tacos. to go. L A L O S. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, listen, you know, man. There's a bunch of taco stands. Who knows, man? But yeah, that's the idea. That's actually a great question. We actually end up learning a lot from uh, 
you listen to the podcast and you have a whole bunch of places to eat your way around Baja. That's right. Eat your way around Baja. <laughs> Bill Caswell, thank you very much for this time.